Syria is in free fall. Relentless shelling has killed thousands of civilians and displaced the populations of entire towns. An untold number of men and women have disappeared while passing through the ubiquitous checkpoints. Those freed from detention are living with the physical and mental scars of torture. Hospitals have been bombarded, leaving the sick and wounded to languish without care. With the destruction of thousands of schools, a generation of children now struggle to obtain an education. The majority remain seriously fragmented, with fighters continually shifting allegiance usually to better resourced groups. Extremist elements are a minority, but play an active role in hostilities. Civilians are the real victims of this prolonged war. Crimes that shock the conscience have become a dreadful daily reality in Syria. Over, 100, uh, sorry, over 800 days since the unrest first began, it is apparent that violations against civilians and all the combat fighters by both sides continue with little regard to law or to conscience. One of the most insidious aspects of the Syrian conflict has been the disappearance of thousands of people from their homes at checkpoints and from the streets. Across Syria, families wait in desperate hope that their loved ones will be safely returned to them. As the war reads, torture, as documented in our report, continues to be committed on a widespread and systematic basis, most frequently inside the detention centers of government intelligence and agencies. Torture has also allegedly occurred inside state and military hospitals. Some anti-government armed groups also torture captured soldiers during interrogations, employing the same methods used by intelligence agencies. Those who supply arms to the various warring parties are not creating the ground for victory, but rather the illusion of victory. This is a dangerous and irresponsible illusion, as it allows the war to unfold endlessly before us. As the conflict extends, it opens the door to further immense human suffering and the possible conflagration of an entire region. It's time for the international community to act decisively. There are no easy choices. To evade choice, however, is to countenance the continuation of this war and its many violations. The conflict will not find its own peaceful solution. Its path does not flow towards negotiation. Nevertheless, a return to a negotiation leading to a political settlement is imperative.